Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about what kind of iPad should you get for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. When we talk about the Pro models, we have the two different screens. By the way, this is an 11-inch iPad Pro, still the M1 that I got in 2021. And most of the videos that you see here on my channel, everything about DaVinci Resolve, I created on this iPad. Together with the Magic Keyboard, with the overlay for video editing and the Apple Pencil. Many people are always asking, like, this is like one of the hardest questions to answer. What kind of iPad should I get? Should I get the 13 inch or should I get the 11 inch? What's the best, the pro and con? And it's not so easy to answer because on a certain degree, you have to answer that for yourself. The main reason why I got the 11 inch at the beginning when I started, Da Vinci wasn't out yet, uh, at the beginning of 2021, no, in the middle of 2021, I just wanted to have a small form factor. And I thought that the 13 inch is way too big as a, yeah, as a, as a, just an iPad, as a tablet. That's the original idea that I had when I purchased that iPad. And I still like the size for gaming, for content, consumption, and everything. But now over the years, working with DaVinci Resolve, I think the question, should I get the 13 inch to work with DaVinci Resolve, has some ground. Let me explain, but it's not as easy. And that is the reason why I make this video, because in this video today, I wanna to focus on something that most YouTubers don't talk about. An iPad is not an iPad. Did you know that it is not just the size that is different from the 11 inch iPad to the 13 inch, obviously you get a bigger screen, but it's also the aspect ratio. You change from the aspect ratio that you have here on the 11 inch to a different one if you actually choose to get the 13 inch model. And for that, I prepared you something. Let's go back into history. This is not the very first iPad, but it's similar to the iPads that we had originally with the button and everything. And when Apple introduced the iPad, it actually introduced the iPad with a form factor and aspect ratio of four to three. We had four and three. And the main reason for that, very simple, let me just open this one here. 4 to 3. The main reason was the iPad was designed that you can work with the iPad like this or like this. And at the time when the iPad came out, many of the competition Android models, they had the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Just as in comparison, when you have a, have a, when you have a laptop, most laptops have a 16 by 9 or 16 by 10. It's good for media consumption because when the early 2000s came, we switched from four to three for TVs and monitors to actually more to a widescreen aspect ratio. And so in the early days, when the first tablets came out, they also tried to implement that 16 by nine to a tablet. But hear me out. For watching movies, 16 by nine is the best aspect ratio because then you don't lose anything, right? So you can actually watch a movie. But these devices like the iPad is not just designed to watch movie and to consume content. It's to read, it's to game, it's to work. That's also why most laptops don't have a 16 by nine. Many laptops actually have a 16 by 10. That means you have a little bit more room on the top to work with. And with the iPad, they introduced the 4 by 3 because that was the aspect ratio where you still had enough space when you actually hold it like this because you have to imagine if you have 16 by 9, everything is just longer. It's not as comfortable to read and everything. So that's why Apple came up with the first aspect ratio, 4 by 3. And for many years, we had the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. But then over the years, we got the introduction of the iPad Pros, the borders became smaller. Finally, in 2018, we had this size, 11 inch, the iPad Pro. But Apple tried to do one thing. They tried to keep the footprint of the 
iPad, the same. So they just reduced all the edges. And if you look at the 11 inch model, it doesn't have a 4x3 screen anymore. The 11 inch, and that's exactly the model that I have, is a 3 to 2 aspect ratio. That means it's a little bit more longer, a little bit less room on the top if you hold it like this. Still good enough, so you can still have it like this, turn it around, can consume media. And this is the aspect ratio that we have for the 11 inch iPad Pro. But not just that. The iPad mini has actually the same 3 by 2 aspect ratio. So if you get an iPad mini, you also have a 3 by 2 that is more closer for watching videos, for example. It's not 16 by 9, but a little bit longer than 4 by 3. And what about now the 13 inch iPad Pro? Because I guess if you clicked on this video, same like me, you are asking yourself, should I get the 11 inch iPad Pro? or should I get the 13 inch iPad Pro? And of course, 13 inch is bigger. But what kind of aspect ratio do we have? And with the iPad Pro 13 inch or the 12.9 is the same, we just got a little bit more, is a four by three. So Apple redesigned the 13 inch model also in 2018, the 12.9, and changed it back to a four by three. The positive of a 4x3, same like with the introduction of the iPad and all the older modules, is that you have more room when you have it like this. You have more room here to the top. And because of that, it's wider. That means also, that means also you can see more if you hold your iPad like this. But now here comes the point. And this is preference. Now I'm thinking about getting an upgrade. And for DaVinci Resolve, I'm actually thinking about upgrading to the 13 inch model. But with the 13 inch model, I will change my aspect ratio. And with my iPad so far, I was doing a lot of things. I was watching movies. I was watching TV shows. I was consuming YouTube and many YouTubers make their videos in 16 by nine. So it's actually good to see how does these devices look with 16 by nine. So if we come back here to the original iPad, if we have a 16 by nine, that's that one here now, all this, what you now see here red is basically what you have as black bars when you watch a movie or YouTube video here on that device. How about the iPad 11 inch? The 11 inch, we still have some black bars, the green one here, but it's not as much as on a four by three aspect ratio. And as the big iPad 13 is 4x3 again, let's see how it looks here. If you watch content here, videos, that is 16x9, you will lose that much as black bars. Because this video is tailored to DaVinci Resolve, obviously, if you start up DaVinci Resolve, you have a bigger screen if we compare those two. And also you have more room to the top and to the bottom. So the easy answer for that would be, yes, on the 13 inch DaVinci Resolve, you have such so much more space to work with. But is it a deal breaker? That's why I opened this video. Everything you see here on my channel, over 200 videos about DaVinci Resolve and everything in my masterclass in the last two and a half years were created on the iPad 11 inch. So is it impossible? To work on an iPad with 11 inch? Not really. You can start up DaVinci Resolve and work with DaVinci Resolve, especially if, if you have projects like my YouTube videos. Obviously, if your project's getting bigger, if your projects are maybe even a short movie where you have maybe 20, 30, 40 different tracks, you will appreciate the bigger size. But if you have that many tracks, maybe you even run into problems with the iPad and you want to work on a desktop with an external monitor that is big. But we can also plug in an external monitor for the iPad version, but it's not as seamless and not as comfortable yet as with a desktop. Just saying all that. So it depends on what kind of project you're doing. If you're 
creating little shorts, if you're creating YouTube tutorials like I do, then you can do all of this on the 11 inch. One more thought. When I decided to go with this setup here, with the Magic Keyboard, like I said, it's the M1, everything became now a little bit more tiny, not tiny, but uh, the weight is reduced. We have a thinner device than ever with the new iPads. And also the Magic Keyboard is not as heavy as the old one anymore. But keep in mind, the design is the same. Because we have a setup like this, where this could flip over very easy if this would be too light. There is a lot of weight here in the keyboard so that this actually can stand without falling over. And when we take this and measure that, I don't know the exact measurements anymore, but I did it when I purchased this iPad. And I also put the pencil in. This setup with 11 inch is already more heavy than if I would have purchased a 13 inch MacBook Air. A 13 inch MacBook Air is less weight than the iPad setup if you get the Magic Keyboard. And now imagine, if you get the 13 inch, it will add more weight to that one as well. Will I do it? I will probably upgrade because now I see that my iPad is getting older. How can I see that with the battery life? I'm going through my battery now faster and faster. I'm considering the next time I'm going back to Germany, probably go to an Apple store and maybe replace the battery and see if this solves the problem. Maybe I don't have to upgrade because for DaVinci itself, I don't need to upgrade. Every, one, every M chip is very capable for the iPad to run DaVinci Resolve. So if you're thinking about that. But because of DaVinci Resolve, I'm thinking about getting the 13 inch. But now let's, let's talk about something else. I'm not just using this for DaVinci Resolve. I'm also using this for gaming. And many games, if you now look at the screens again, so this is a three to, this is a three to two aspect ratio, right? So it's not 16 by nine, but not like four by three. If you look at four by three, I have these black bars here on the side, here and here. And if I look at 16 by nine, this is how I can consume media. And the problem here is I have black bars here on the bottom and on the top, but many games are actually in 16 by nine. So you could get the most out of a game in 16 by nine. I give you an example. I play Wild Rift Leech of Legends. And since the beginning, when I started playing on my iPad, I love to play on the iPad because you see more. I think that the 11 inch is the perfect size for gaming. The 13 inch is very big and sometimes you have to look too much. I person that's my personal preference. But also if you play the same game now on, let's do this off. So if I start the game here on the four by three device, because I have a little bit less here and here than compared to a three by two device, the three by two is already cutting something off from the 16 by nine, but it's still it's still okay to play. But with the four by three, if I would start League of Legends Wild Rift, I would even lose more. That's why, for example, for gaming, I would actually say that the iPad mini and the iPad Pro 11 inch is the best form factor that you have the best of both worlds. So you have the aspect ratio still to game, but also still enough space to use the iPad in DaVinci and the other programs. If you don't care about games, and you really just want to use this as the largest screen and the most screen real estate, then of course it's a no brainer Then you should go with the iPad 13. But that's the thing. We have these different aspect ratios and it depends on how you use your device. If you watch a lot of videos, that's why I have here the 16 by nine, you will always have a lot of black bars on your 13 inch, a little bit less black bars. But of course, the 13 inch is bigger. So the overall screen is a bigger screen if you actually consume content. But because it's bigger, it's a 13 inch, that means it's almost the size of my MacBook 14 inch with the whole setup is a heavy setup to travel around. Just my thoughts. <laughs> I don't have a complete conclusion. Um, in this video, I just wanted to bring the awareness that we have these different aspect ratios. And if you're thinking and considering buying one, consider the aspect ratio as well. 
And maybe this, this video is somehow helpful for you to see in which direction you go. I'm struggling at the moment. I will probably get the, 60, uh, the 13 inch because of DaVinci Resolve, because my brand is also about DaVinci Resolve. But honestly, for gaming, I'm actually thinking about upgrading to another 11 inch so that I can keep my gaming experience as it was because I got used to game on that device. And I think this is the perfect, it's not too heavy, everything fine and not too big of a screen. That's the, I think it's the perfect gaming screen size. But let me know what you think with this loaded question. Which iPad should you get for DaVinci Resolve or for your daily consumption? Because not every person can purchase a couple of different iPads, right? And then just use whatever you want in that moment. So let me know in the comments which iPad are you using and which one will you buy for DaVinci Resolve or for your personal use. I hope this was helpful. These are the aspect ratios. See you in the next video. I'm Daniel, and on this channel, it's all about DaVinci Resolve, iPad, filmmaking, Final Cut Pro, and we even talk nerd stuff like aspect ratios of these devices. I'm Daniel. See you in the next video. If you liked this video, hit like. If you thought like, what the fuck, I don't want to talk about aspect ratio, then give me a thumbs down. No problem. See you in the next video. Bye.